So I've got a few um, scraps of ePay and what I wanted to do with them is create a uh, small mallet. So here's what I have. Thinking I might use uh, this piece because it's, it's kind of tapered already, and uh, it's probably about 10 inches long. <clears throat> and here's some scraps I have. The reason I was thinking of making this is because. I do, I do a little bit of uh, hand tool work and sometimes my chisel, um, it just uh, is a, a little tough sometimes and uh, you know, I like to have a small mallet but not anything uh, like a, a hammer. So, some, so this would be good for a carving or um, any kind of fine work where you need to hit something but you don't want a full-blown hammer. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is rip this piece in half and that will give me uh, the, two, the two sides for the, uh, the mallet. Alright, so let's see. This piece is a little over two and a quarter so if we do one and an eighth it should give us two pieces that are almost even and then there'll be a small curve so that should take up the, the remainder I'm going to put a couple clamps on this uh, plywood fence. Or it's not plywood, it's uh, 2 by 6 I want to put, you don't want to tighten up those clamps too tight because then you'll change the angle of the, the fence. So, I'll put two clamps on and then they don't have to be super tight. All right, we'll get a push stick. And I know I've got my <clears throat> fence set, I mean my guard set high, but uh, there's reasons for that and uh, so just exercise caution. Saw, you can use a, a, a rip saw and just do it by hand. Right. For some reason, I must have measured wrong. So I'm going to cut this one down so that they're the same, same uh, dimension. this is the same thickness maybe we can use this later so we'll save that too okay so now we have two heads for our mallet and we'll move on the next operation is to chamfer these Corners, cut them at a 45 degree so that I've created an octagon and then uh, we'll round it over from there. We're going to do that with a uh, chisel. 
All right, I got my one good chisel I like to use. And I'm just going to take out these edges. And then the corners. I'm using a different board than the one I showed in uh, the introduction picture because this one is a little thicker. So it's very similar, it's the same uh, height, but this is just a little thicker. Okay. And what I want to do is towards the towards the top of the mallet, I want it tapered. So I'm gonna take a little more off of the top. And, and it, more than even taking a chamfer, what, what we're actually doing is trying to round this over. Yeah, that is big, big chunk, but it's all right because again, we want the, the top thin. Somehow, I think that will give us. That's correct, but just how about what I think. Alright, let's turn this around in the vise. Actually, I could probably leave this area unchampered up here, except I'm creating a, a taper, but going to be gluing the head of the uh, hammer there, so. You don't want to take up too much up here where we're going to take the, uh, we're going to glue on the hammer head. You could do this with the black paint plane, but it's so small. I think this is the easiest. Plus you have more control, you can kind of round over. see the uh, taper we've created. I think what I'll do is just uh, take a little more off. And this side. symmetrical. And it's always important to <clears throat> clamp your work when using a chisel. you can slip and cut yourself. Alright, so we got something a little more 
symmetrical, just uh, take, take that uh, taper down a little farther. Just a little farther to match the other side. And this is Ipe. Strong, so it's a good material for a, a hammer. Okay, so we're getting there. Keep the chisel really away from yourself. Just trying to flatten out the area with the glue. And I'm just going to be using a, a CA glue, like a super glue that's made for wood. So we'll be able to use this today. some more work on the handle once we get everything glued up but you get the idea okay so originally I was going to was intending on uh, putting these on either side and then cutting some pieces to fill in that gap and then gluing everything together but I think it'll be much better if and I rounded this quite a bit so it'll be better if I uh, create a hole and uh, maybe a tapered hole and then uh, I can just insert this in there and, and get a nice friction fit so that's what I'm going to do The saw grain is running this way, perpendicular, so it'll create a stronger, uh, stronger uh, hammer because you really can't break this wood easily going this way. But uh, if you go this way, it could it could could potentially split in half. It probably wouldn't, but so I'm gonna do that. Uh, Little Let me do that wedge, and hopefully, I don't split the whole thing. If I do, we'll just taper it some more and we'll deal with it. That did it. Yeah, 
Good. I'll try to show this on camera. You see, we kind of got this split in thirds. And what I'm doing to make it easier to insert is I, I pre-inserted the wedges. Now I put it through the hole. Of course it makes it a little tighter fit, but now, now you can see I don't have to insert them when it's in the hole, which would be difficult because the hole compresses those cracks. So we have it inserted, and what we're going to do is uh, put some of that CA on there and then uh, hammer it down. We've got a little rubber mallet. And we just kind of flood the area with the CA glue. And the viscosity is very thin on it, so it should get in there pretty good. I'm just going to pound those down there. Because I don't want to go anymore. And then once we get there, we'll just trim them off. And you can kind of see them in there. And you can see now it, the, the hole is per it's perfectly flush on all sides. We're going to do something similar with the bottom, except uh, we're going to use Epe. This is maple wedges. We'll make a few more of those, and then we'll put those in. One thing you can do is before I split this, I can taper it. Okay, and that will then give you tapered wedges. Okay, so we're going to insert these wedges. Just by laying them on the bench and just cutting them uh, like along the length of the grain as if they I was cutting long triangles one nice thing about the CA glue is it's, it's totally clear so you're not gonna get any discoloration just try to get a couple more in there. Remember, we're going to trim these off. This one. <clears throat> All right, that's good. Now I'm just going to use the chisel to press them down. Some of that glue on now. Some of them are going down quite a bit. Other ones are just snapping off. And
So we have the basic uh, hammer finished. Now I'm just going to do some sanding and maybe a little shaping with the chisel and we'll be done. And like I said, I wasn't worried about the glue. We can just plane away the glue. Very light duty. You can kind of see the, uh, the maple wedges we put in there. I gotta clean up around here where we put the other wedges, so that is uh got quite a bit of force to it with that long thin handle and get quite a bit of speed. Alright, and here's how we'll clean up the lower wedges. Very careful with the ingrain. I don't want it to get areas that break. Having a sharp chisel helps. So badly once with the chisel. So <clears throat> I think the most important thing is to have your work held solidly and carve with two hands going away from yourself. But it's always when the work slips that I've had problems. The work slips out of the way and the chisel keeps going. I have to work a little bit on this. But I think uh, I'm just going to run the edges on my uh, drill press sander and we'll call it done. We'll, have, we'll put a little 